Inflation is ruining America. And today's show, you're going to learn why things are about to go from bad to worse. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today as we pick up the story on how inflation is ruining America because people don't understand. They look at inflation and they look back at history and they say someday America is going to deal with a secular rise in inflation, meaning that we're going to see inflation for not just a year or two, but for decades. They believe it. But what they don't understand is the global monetary system doesn't actually work that way. In fact, when America gets trapped with high rates of inflation, it's really bad news because as a global reserve currency, our primary job is to export inflation, is to export dollars. And when they get trapped here, well, generally a recession is soon to follow. And for those of you who are struggling perhaps with how this works, think of it as if we're on the gold standard, or maybe you're into crypto and we're on a crypto standard, but all of the gold or crypto in this case is in America. What would our job be as the holder of all these gold mines or crypto mines? What would our role be in the global economy? Would be to mine and export it to the rest of the world so they can enjoy prosperity and be a part of the global economy. And the same is true when you're on the dollar standard. As the global reserve currency, our goal is to create dollars through our financial system, through blending money, and exporting those dollars through the rest of the world. And when we don't export them, perhaps due to supply chain issues, things from an inflation standpoint and the economy go from bad to worse. And now let's take a look at how this is unfolding right before our eyes. Here we see this headline from Zero Hedge of the Fed's favorite inflation indicator spikes to almost 40 year highs as real spending. Remember, every time you see real substitute inflation as adjusted spending goes flat. Well, maybe it's not even that good. Let's take a look at the U.S. personal income. It came out last week, month over month, up in November, 0.4%, which is great news. We see Americans making more money, but personal consumption expenditures, the cost that the consumers bear. Now, mind you, we look at mostly the consumer price index. The Fed looks at the PCE, which is just a slight different version of it, was up 0.6%, so we can see prices absolutely outpacing incomes and that's a problem because it leads to less spending and here we can see the consumer price index for all urban consumers on a month over month was up 0.8 percent so again it tells us that even though wages are rising they're not rising fast enough and when consumers have less money well they spend less or as we can see here, they drain their savings rate. So the personal savings rate is slowed to 6.9%, kind of back where it was for, for most of this expansion, but the trend is coming way, way, way down. And one thing I want you to understand about personal savings rate is it's a terrible metric for kind of, you know, if you're looking to time a recession or think about that, it, it doesn't work. But I want you to understand what the savings rate does tell us. So let's look at this chart for a moment. And we can see during expansions, or the white part, you see the savings rate generally goes down. Now, this was an exception over the last decade, but why does it go down? And it's real simple. If you believe that your financial system situation is going to improve in the months and years going forward, well, you don't need to save as much. You can consume more now, knowing that, hey, I'll, I'll take advantage of prices before they go higher, spend now, and then I can save later with my higher income. And that makes a lot of sense. That there's a challenge though, is when you have the withdrawal of fiscal stimulus and people are dealing with high prices, where do they first turn to? And their savings. And that's what we're seeing now is people are just see, able to save less. And as that fiscal stimulus goes away, I expect this number to come down even further. And there is something that happens when the savings rate gets too low. People stop spending. Think about this. When your savings gets too low, what do you do? Spend more? No, people tend to stay, cut their spending and try to bring their savings back up. And that is a red flag. That's bad news for the economy. And again, that is the story here of inflation because here's that personal consumption expenditures on a year over year basis, the, up to 5.7% with the core excluding food and energy running at 4.7. And we know the Fed is going to start pumping the brakes mid-January as they accelerate the pace of their taper. And from a consumer's perspective, this is bad news. This is real personal disposal personal income, which is inflation adjusted disposal personal income is zero on a year over year basis, meaning that Americans are no better off from a disposal income standpoint than they were a year ago. 
But a year ago, what did they have? They had fiscal stimulus. They had extra money. And what are they going to have going forward? Well, at the moment, we have no more child tax credit. We have no more pandemic unemployment assistance. We have no more one-time checks. We have no more PPP. We have nothing to support them. And that's bad news going forward as inflation takes ahead of things and wages aren't keeping up. That means spending is likely to go down. But hey, there's some good news that we see. Of course, Wall Street Journal headline that but jobless claims hold near historic lows. So that's got to be good news because a sh showing labor market remains tight as unemployment applications have been near the lowest level since the 1960s in recent weeks. So that has to be good, right? Claims as low as they are right now is an indicative, an indicative of a tight labor market and people aren't being laid off. They're quitting. Or perhaps it's an indication that we're at full employment. And perhaps the employers aren't going to go out and hire these people. They're waiting for the demand to show up and these prices to stick. And that's really the bigger issue here is that perhaps we are indeed at full employment, which is historically what this tells us. And so we see the rate at which people are quitting jobs has been at record levels in recent months as employers compete for workers by offsetting better pay and condition. So here we see layoffs have been trending lower in recent months at the rate workers quitting their job has risen as higher inflation prompts employees to seek raises. And they should. In the week ending December 4th, the initial jobless claims fell to 188,000, the lowest weekly level since 1969. And again, my friends, that is an indication that we are indeed at full employment. And there's some other evidence as we look not just at the spending, but the demand for goods going forward. And for that, we take a look at business investment proxy weakens in November, durable goods orders buoyed by big Boeing buy. And here you can see capital goods, new orders. So this is when you see new orders of durable goods and durable goods are things that last. Think of washers, dryers, fridges, things you buy and then you're not expecting them to break anytime soon. And you're in fact, you're expecting them to own them for a while with maybe perhaps minimal amount of maintenance. And so when the economy is doing really well, these durable goods orders should be rising as people demand, you know, the latest and greatest and perhaps want to replace their older durable goods. And what do we see for the second time since the pandemic, if we look at new orders excluding or non-defense, excluding aircraft and parts, was down 0.1%, which is just an indication that demand from a factory side is going to slow down. And why would that make sense? Because we look at the University of Michigan data, which came out on Thursday, consumer sentiment overall, broad consumer sentiment blue, is back below where it was at the bottom of the pandemic because expectations going forward are only slightly better than where they were in the pandemic and current conditions are about where they were. And do you remember where we were during the, in the initial stages of pandemic? You know, the global economy shut down, Americans went home, and it took time before Congress could pass anything to put money in people's pockets. So you have to look back at the sentiment in early 2020 when people really didn't have a lot of faith in the economy, they didn't have extra money to spend, and fast forward to now, and what are they telling you? Hey, we feel the same way then we do now, except instead of dealing with the economy shut down, we're dealing with out of control prices. And when that happens, what does that do to future spending? It starts to slow it down, which is what we see in the durable goods data. Is it saying, hey, there's not a big demand for new orders all of a sudden. In fact, we're starting to see that continue to slow down as consumers demand less and less goods and services. And the inflation story doesn't end there because the University of Michigan pulls that too. And what do we see that exchange in price over the next five to 10 years is starting to peak out. So people don't believe that this inflation is gonna last that long. They believe it's gonna roll over. But in the short term, and this is the issue as we get in here, is in the short term, perhaps the next six months, year, or even couple of years, consumers believe it's going to stay high. And that is what you're seeing in that personal savings rate. You're seeing in the durable goods orders. And you're seeing here, even in the bond market, telling you that, look, the bond market knows this is transitory. In fact, the bond market is one of the greatest proxies for all of this that you could look at. In fact, if you're concerned about inflation, one of the things you shouldn't be concerned about 
is with your portfolio. Be sure to check out Portfolio Shield if you haven't done already. I'll put a link up there for you. But let's look at the bond market because it's telling you so many things about what's going on. It's telling you, look, go back to the great financial crisis. You know, in University of Michigan, inflation expectations were higher than they are now. And what happened? The bond market yields went down and said no. In fact, when you see this happen, there are times when inflation expectations are rising and yields are rising with it. And that usually means that, hey, the, the bond market is saying that, yeah, this growth story is real and you can see it in the 2000s. But look what happened in the great financial crisis. Look what happened in about 2011, 2012. Inflation expectations rose. Bond market said no. And inflation expectations cooled. It's telling you that now that, hey, this isn't a story of persistent inflation. It's a story of supply chain inflation. And what do we see consumers do? Holiday sales move forward. They jump 8.5% as consumers return to retailers. It's good news. Sales grew across the board in both in stores and online. So you're saying, hey, maybe the consumer Consumer is really back. Well, hold tight for the holiday season to find us November 1st to December 24th. Consumers started searching for gifts, a keyword, earlier than usual with supply chain ro supply chains rolling retailers and stores offering more promotions to jumpstart this holiday shopping season. Even Wall Street Journal follows up Bloomberg's headline with spending was strong heading to Omicron and will be after. Oh, will it? Well, maybe not. Wall Street Journal, let's keep going. The Commerce Department on Thursday reported that consumer spending rose to seasonally adjusted 0.6 in November from October and was also revised its October spending figures higher. Even after taking into account how worries about the Omicron variant are now depressing some activity, it looks as if the economy will put in a very strong fourth quarter performance. And then the same article says there are a lot of things that could be going on at once. For starters, a fair amount of holiday spending looks as pulled forward in October since people were worried that supply chain snarls might mean they wouldn't get their gifts on time. And that was a concern echoed by retailers. So what does this mean from the consumer? Again, I want you to be thinking is what does this mean from consumption? If we're seeing the effects pulled forward, well, going forward, that means consumption is going to fall. Of course, the University of Michigan survey is telling us that, but let's keep going. So what happens next? Credit and bank card data from both Bank of America and J.P. Morgan Chase indicate that spending is weak in this month, particularly in services related categories such as airlines and restaurants. And of course, one might have gathered as much from reading the news or walking around. So long as a new wave of COVID-19 cases persists, spending experience will be dampened. And immediately, the Wall Street Journal turns around and headlines Omicron starts to slow U.S. economy as a story we're making the case for today as consumer spending flags fewer people are dining in restaurant and rising case numbers are leading many businesses to close for a short period here we see the number of diners seated at restaurants nationwide was down 15 percent in the week ending december 22nd and the same period in 2019 a steeper decline in late november data from reservation site open table show us how hotel occupancy was at 53.8 for the week and then december 18th slightly below the previous week's level and that is bad news of course rising case numbers are leading many businesses to close for a short period entertainment venues to cancel shows universities shift classes online and offices to delay or reverse opening phases and what does that all lead to well kind of the story we're talking about here is inflation stays high what does this mean for the consumer and the economy well we see here we are still on track for a very strong fourth quarter consumption but i'm now seeing that momentum continues to fade according to the chief economist at jeffrey's llc and again my friends that is the broad story this here we see inflation is not just ruining america that if it stays high it's going to do a lot more damage but if as soon as we see those exports go and inflation get out of the U.S., well, look for the economy to slow. And things in that perspective are going to be bad news because high prices are going to stick for a little while. And with wages lower, well, that's how you ex get exactly to a recession is less demand, less consumption, and less spending. And with that, I appreciate all of you being fans and supporting the show. Of course, we'll be back on Wednesday to see what news is going on in the economy. Until then... I'm Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. Bye now. The content of this series provides educational information. It's not intended by investment or other advice. It should not be construed as a recognition or solicitation by a security financial instrument or participate in a particular trading strategies. For real, what's prepared by Steve Van Meter or personal capacity, business expressive video that I do not affect the view of Atlas Financial Advice, Inc. or Steve Van Meter Financial.